Welcome to the Huge Pop Sports Podcast here on the Huge Pop YouTube channel where we talk all things in the wide world of sports like baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and much, much more. So please welcome our hosts to the Huge Pop Sports Podcast, the M.A. Double T, and the Huge Pop himself, Matt and Scott Rogers. Hey, yo, we're back. It's me. It's me. It's that M.A. Double T starting this Friday off this Masters Weekend edition of the Huge Pop Sports Podcast. Uh, again, Friday with me, as always, is my bro, Scott. What's up, man? Um, so, before we dive into the Masters Golf Tournament, um, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, Sunday and Monday, college hoops. We'll start with that. Uh, we're going to talk about the MLB. What happened? What's the early feel of the of the MLB? What's going on? Uh, we'll talk about the NBA playoff picture very briefly because I find that to be absolutely confusing and boring. Uh, the NHL playoffs is also uh, in full swing too. Uh, we'll talk, we'll give that a preview and, uh, then finish the show off with the Masters Golf Tournament that is currently live on ESPN and the Masters app. So if you have any of those, check it out. If you like golf, if not, I, I, I get it. Um, so start off with the women's, uh, national championship game. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin Clark did everything she could but her team just fall apart. I mean, it it's a, it's a single player versus the teams in South Carolina, right? So, I mean. Yeah, I noticed that throughout the whole tournament, you know, when Caitlin Clark, Clark scores half or half or more per, of your points, you know, you're going to come across the big dogs. And I think that's what happened on um, whatever day that was when she came across the, um, the team that got – South Carolina that rolled them. I mean, you can, yeah, only do, they, you can only do so much. And and I think rates really to me, um, it's a. Uh, I, I don't want to say it. Um, it was Caitlin Clark versus the world for most of the for for pretty much the whole tournament because she got so much hate. And I I don't think it was deserved at all. Um, it's it's just a shame that people have to say some of the stuff that they do. That they, there's some people like Stu Bird, I believe, came out and said it was either Stu Bird or Diana Taurasi said that she's not even the fifth best player in the country. I wouldn't I wouldn't pick her to start up. And I'm thinking, really, she shattered scoring records. She. She's not, and, and the thing is, she's not just a scorer, and she led her team in a fifth, too. So, how did... So, Matt, Matt, here's a serious question I have uh, in regards to um, Clark and Iowa. You know, we're, Matt and I are from Michigan, and um, we're Big Ten fans. There's always that discussion. Is the Big Ten women's basketball that much weaker than say the South Carolina and Tennessee's or the you know the, the SEC's or ACC, is that why she looked so good throughout her career because she was in the Big Ten and if she finally faced an SEC team? I I don't know. I'm I'm just asking the question. No, I. Here's the thing. So I wrote these stats down, which because I because I was having a conversation with somebody else and I I really I wanted to really look at it. Um. I was I, I put Angel Reese from LSU and Caitlin Clark next to each other. Okay. okay. They both are four year players at major universities. Right. Caitlin Clark's a two time AP player of the year. Okay. Okay. Reese, zero. She's never won that award. Caitlin Clark is a three time NCAA all region team selection. Angel Reese, two. 
Caitlin Clark is a two-time NCAA All-Tourney team selection. Angel Reese, zero. Um, Caitlin Clark was the Wooden Award winner. Angel Reese was not. And Caitlin Clark was the Naismith Player of the Year twice, and Angel Reese has zero. The only thing that Angel has that Caitlin does not is a national championship. Um, points per game, Caitlin Clark, 28.4. Angel Reese, 18.6. Total uh, rebounds per game, Caitlin Clark, 7.1. Angel Reese, 12.3. Now, the reason for the big difference there is because of the difference of positions that they play. I mean, Caitlin is a point guard. Angel Reese is a small forward. She's going to get more rebounds. And uh, the assists per game throughout their four-year career Caitlin Clark, when she while she averaged twenty eight point four a game, she averaged nine and a half assists per game. Angel Reese, one point five. To me, I'm picking Caitlin Clark over Angel Reese. Now, she's not very big. I can say that. Um, um let's see, Caitlin Clark. Is she is six foot? And I mean, she's not bad for a, for a guard in, in women's basketball. So, do you see her going top five? With I mean, okay, I I will I'll make a bold statement, and I, I guess I won't be that bold, but to me, she is the female Steph Curry. She she doesn't miss. She and she creates her own shot. I I think she to me if I'm if I'm if I'm in need of a point guard, I'm taking Caitlin Clark. If I need a point guard, because and she moves very well without the ball. She doesn't need to have the ball all the time. To me, she's a total package. I would take her again. But if I need someone like, if I need a person to rebound, yeah, I'm taking it. Angel Reese. If I if I already have an established point guard, I'm not taking another one. That's just stupid. Well, I think you. I mean, the thing you said about the in that game, I think you've seen, you've seen Caitlin Clark and Caitlin Clark in Iowa. Iowa has a good team, but they don't have stars like uh, South Carolina had. That that team was loaded. You know. Okay. Here's another stat for you. This is this is one that really got me thinking. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna go and find it. Um, it's a, the box score. Okay. I went back and wanted to look at the box score. South Carolina won 87, 75. So they won by 12. Um, out of the 75 points that Iowa scored, 30 of them came from Caitlin and the other portion of that 75 were from the starting five. No one from the bench scored. South Carolina, they had one, two, three. They had four girls in double digits, and one of them came off the bench with twenty. So you're deep. They're much deeper. They're than, deep. Yeah. Yeah. It, much deeper than Iowa. And you, and you know, we talk about sports, high school sports, uh, any college sports. You know, even professional basketball, I guess. But um, you talk that you. The deeper your bench is, you know, Matt and I played high school sports, and you know, you knew that you, they was a good team when the kids could come off the bench and still be good. And well, unfortunately, that didn't happen for Iowa because nobody scored off the bench, and that's where you get beat. It's not yeah. your, it, it's just how deep you are, and that makes sense. Um, and talk about deep, deep benches. It, it, it that held true for the that men's championship game as well. Hundred percent. Uh, UConn just looked like a, um, like a, a team from a different planet. Yeah. Um, that team from Purdue, a hell of a great run this year. My hat, my hat goes off to that team. That was a hell of a great group of kids. 
Yeah. Uh, they knocked off my boys from NC State, though. I was kind of hoping NC State would beat them, but uh, did you? Okay, so this is the first team since uh, 2006, 2007, Florida Gators to win back to back. Really? Okay. Um, it's the it's they they are the seventh team all time since 1945 to win back to back championships. So it's only uh, UConn and six other teams, including a Duke Blue Devil team when they beat Michigan, oh. and the UNLV Michigan, and then of course all those teams from UCLA that won back to back to back to back to back. Uh, right. And then Kansas, I think way back in the day, won one or won a couple back to back. But yeah, it it's a very good UConn team. Very good UConn team. You know, same thing. I'm looking at the stats right now. Same thing. You know, Purdue, four of the five people, four of the five team members in the starting lineup scored. And only one, and mind you, two of them in the starting five scored double digits. One being Eddie, Eday or whatever, how you spell his name, say his name. The difference again comes back to their bench. Purdue had one guy score two, and you well, got I guess had, they had one guy score or two guys score four and nine, but yeah, but still, everybody in that starting five scored something. What and it's four of those guys scored in double digits. So again, it comes down to how deep you are and how active you are, and how you know when your guys are taking a break. You know they need they need help. And it just yeah. See, they might not score points off the bench. It it's more of a like can they play defense? Right. Because they need to get stops and clearly they did. Uh they yeah. need to so and they didn't get like and the fouls are pretty pretty even, eighteen and fifteen. Yeah. Um what I think is pretty interesting is that as a team, as a team, Purdue had eight assists. Eight. UConn had eighteen. That's ball. That's that's ball movement. Ball movement. Yeah. It, it's it's team basketball, and and I will say this: a team will beat an individual every time, every day of the week. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Michael Jordan lived. Michael Jordan lived that early on in his career. Yeah. Before Scottie Pippen came, became who he is. They had a lot of growing pains, and I'm not by any means saying that these that the teams that only had one player throughout the tournament. I'm not comparing them to Michael Jordan at all. I'm just saying, like it's the similar similarities. Jordan doesn't win without a te- with without his teammates. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. And that's what pissed me off about people that talk about Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls, Detroit Pistons, and Isaiah Thomas. You look at those teams; it's a great example because they were surrounded by talent. I mean, that Chicago Bulls team, man, it was surrounded by Pippen, you know, Horace Grant, uh, obviously Rodman. Well, um, well, Rodman was in the second group. Yeah, but still valuable that he was um all those guys john is it john uh john paxson john paxson he's there craig hodges right oh oh, i love craig hodges i mean i hated him because guess what he could stand up by that three-point line and he would score but it, it was and i could steve, and I, kerr? steve kerr that pissed me off and that's the one thing that pissed me off. i'm not a jordan hater but people got to understand that it was, yes, he was phenomenal. I'm not going to say he's not. He's probably the, one of the best in this ever, that will ever be. But he had a team that was full of full of talent. It Well, in, I, I get in these debates with the LeBron lovers, the people who mm-hmm. just love LeBron and think he's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. And they're like, well, Jordan had all the help. I'm like, well, the difference is, he didn't go and recruit help. Correct. They drafted that help. Absolutely. They drafted Horace Grant. They drafted Scottie Pippen. The only guy that they really traded for was Bill Cartwright. And really, was Bill Cartwright that big of a difference? 
think he was good. He was good, but again, but he was they traded for him and they drafted for everybody else. It's see, that's the problem that I have with basketball today. It's uh I want this guy, I want this guy, I want this guy. You know, and it's not the it's not the owners that are doing this. It's the players telling the owners what to do to make him happy. That's not what it's no. Yeah. And and Rodman was a free agent, Cody. He he wasn't he we they picked the Bulls picked him up because they needed a rebounder. They lost a guy like Horace Grant who used to rebound the hell out of the ball too. Really Horace Grant and Rodman were Horace Grant was a poor man's Dennis Rodman. Yeah. You know, Horace Grant had a better jump shot than Dennis, than Dennis Rodman, but that's about it. Um, Horace Grant left to go to Orlando for more money, I believe, and then Rodman was available because San Antonio and Detroit were like, dude, this guy's a head case. I don't need him anymore. Let's just, we're going to get rid of him. Dressing him drag and shit. Like, um, I mean, but the, he wasn't brought in as he wasn't a recruit. Like, like Jordan didn't say, "I want him because he can score and take the spotlight off of me." Because LeBron, that's what he does. He goes, "All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and take uh, Anthony Davis because I'm tired of harboring all the scoring points, all the like having to shoulder all the responsibility." Jordan. Just like the hustle of Dennis Rodman, and he's all like, "All right, you know, like." I mean, back to that Purdue kid, Eddie. He uh, well, he he wins the award, won an award. I mean, that's good. I mean, that shows how awesome this kid is. You're gonna see him in the NBA. I think he's a, he's definitely a top ten pick. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him in a Pistons uniform, but your kid, your Duke team, your kid, um, flip hop, flip hop. Well, Lipowski, Lipowski, uh, he's going pro. He announced he's going pro to the um. So, is Cody Cody a better? I'm about mad to answer that question. I Cody, <laughs> Cody a better team player? No. Um, Kobe and Michael is one A and one B. Um, they are the they are the exact same player. It's just Kobe was more athletic. That's it's what it comes down to. I and and people that re- watch this back, feel free to fight me on this because I will win. Because Kobe modeled himself, and he has said this multiple. He had said this before he passed away, um, that he modeled his game after Jordan. His turnaround jump shot is the same. As Michael Jordan, his approach to the game is the same as Michael Jordan. He was not going to get outworked. He made everyone else around him better. So no, that that it, he's not a better team player, um, because a once Jordan or once the Shaq left, L.A. And it had, and Kobe had to try to piece back, piece together the Lakers. He couldn't. He, he it took Paul Gasol and like three other kids or three other guy, three their all stars to come save him. So no, Kobe is not a better team player. He 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 fell under the LeBron rule at that point. But he is also the second best player. Or the second. Okay, so. Real quick before we move on, my top five, in no particular order really, except for number one, it's going to be Michael every day, all day. Uh, Larry Bird is number two. Kobe's in the discussion. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson. Those five, I will take against anybody else. I. It's just how it is. That's, good. That's, right. a, good, that's a good five. Um, pretty good five. I mean, so no, Kobe was not a better team player. I'd agree with Michael. I agree with Kobe. Magic Bird. Um, I mean, I might I, throw Shaq in there instead of Kareem because Shaq's more of a dominant force. But Kareem had just he was a he was a captain. If he I had to pick, 
if I had to pick a center, man, I would have to. I would probably have to go with um, David Robinson. I used to love him. He was, yeah, he's like he's that guy that was so quiet, but by the end of the night he's he scored thirty points. And you're like, well, Tim Duncan was the same way. Yeah, Tim, yeah. Tim Duncan, you'd be like, like man, Tim, we didn't really see Tim play tonight. But then you check the box score; he's got forty points. I'm like, <laughs> and that's what, what the that, hell? And that's what that San Antonio team did. Again. You had one guy surrounded by three or four other good guys, and that made that championship team what it was. So I think that that, back to the basketball game, the college, I think that's what happened to Purdue. That's what happened to Iowa. Yeah. They they weren't surrounded by a solid contributing team. They were surrounded by a good team. Don't remember, I'm not going to say that team, those teams were bad, but poor players is what I'm talking about. So – we moved from uh, college basketball to the major league baseball. We're early in the season. Um, Tigers are they started off hot and they kind of fell or fell off a little bit last few week or last week or so. Um, but <clears throat> take a look at the standings here. Um, we have uh, New York Yankees leading the a- a- AL East. Um, we kind of saw that coming after the spring that they were having. Um, the Baltimore Orioles are only game and a half back, so you know it's still early. Adelaide Rushman is the center, and I think he's going to – or not center, but the catcher. I think he's going to uh, continue to have a uh, great career. Uh, he's just only going to get better. Uh, Tampa Bay in third, uh, doing so without um, Wander Franco is a pr- pretty good task for them to uh, be this successful this early. Um, the AL Central, we have Cleveland, a uh, half game up on a surprising Kansas City team. I picked them to finish last. I really did, and they are surprising me. Uh, and then Detroit, a game and a half back of them, uh, or a game and a half back of uh, Cleveland. I thought seven, Minnesota was going to just run the division. Right, seven wins in a row for KC. Holy crap. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, again, it's early, but it's really cool. Uh, in the West, uh, the Texas Rangers leading the West. The uh, game, or a half game up on uh, the Angels and two games up on Seattle and Oakland. And Houston Astros, where are you at, buddy? Where's the trash throws? Oh, they're in last place. Four and ten. Yikes. Yikes, when you press the panic button on a team that's won multiple World Series in the last five years. Yep. Um, then, of course, we have Atlanta winning the NL East. Uh, no surprise there. That team just... It, 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 I wish it could be. I wish Atlanta and the Dodgers were on, like, opposite sides. of you know, like, one's in the AL and one's in the NL, but... Uh, Milwaukee, they're surprised. They surprised me. I didn't. I I thought I had them finishing uh, way back, but they're eight and three. They're winning the Central. Uh, the Cubs are a game and a half back, and Pittsburgh is tied for first. And the Cincinnati Reds are six and six. Uh, that's but that's the team I eventually that I um uh, that I picked to win at the yeah. beginning. Um, but. Then St. Louis, they're six and seven. They're three. They're three games back as well. Then of course Shohei goes to L.A. and he's probably going to win a World Series because you know, I mean, what unless team? he bets it away. So the stat leaders, I, I wrote these stat leaders down. I looked this stuff up uh, earlier. Um, home runs stat leaders. We have two of the uh, in the major league with six home runs this early in the season. Mike Trout and O'Neal from Boston, they both have six. Um, RBIs, uh, Tes- uh, Tio Scar, Hernandez, Berger, and Steer all have 15 RBIs. And then Will Smith is uh, leading the M- MLB in batting average with 4-12. 
tearing the cover off the ball, those guys are. Last, uh, now, last now for the Dodgers has three wins. Uh, Glass now, Bradford, Weaver, and Miller from Detroit. Uh, yeah. Three. Uh, the ERA, four tied at a zero. I don't know if those are starting pitchers or relievers, but I'm assuming they'd be already be starters. But Tyler Glad now trying to find, trying to uh, stake claim to the Cy Young this early in the season. That's 29 Ks. That that Dodger team is dirty. <laughs> they yeah. didn't they didn't need a freaking. Oh yeah. He, Tyler plays for the for the Dodgers, don't he? Yeah, they, they don't need Soho or whatever the fuck. Shohei no. Otani. Shohei, <laughs> they don't need Shohei. My God. Shohei, oh, hey. they better win. They better win 120 games. Oh yeah, without question. <laughs> they 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 should dominate. If they don't, <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, they'll probably go out and try to trade for Mike Trout or something next year. <laughs> probably do that mid-season. Mid so, again, it's early. We'll be talking about baseball pretty much every week, guys. So, it'll be kind of a rundown. It'll be kind of interesting to see how players progress and, like, where, like the to see where, like, the, the stat leaders are throughout the year. Uh, it's kind of our weekly rundown. Um, is there any games going tonight that might be worth looking at? Uh, oh, we got the Angels and Red Sox playing tonight. Um, Windsor at Detroit. At 640 tonight. 640 tonight. Um, the Yankees Guardians have been postponed due to weather. We might get postponed to postponed as well um but yeah it's for brewers orioles that might be a good game uh it's 705 on apple tv so if you got yeah. apple tv check them out yeah so now it's time to head into that other league that play they play basketball in it's called the uh no fun basketball league the nba um we got the we got the playoff picture Pretty much intact right now. It ain't going anywhere, I don't think. But uh, we got Boston. We'll start with the East, I guess. We can start with that playoff, uh, play-in games or whatever, the play-in tournament. Uh, We got the Sixers and the Heat will play. No, wait. I'm sorry. The Sixers, yeah. The Sixers and Heat played first in in that, uh, in their playoff play-in game. And then there's the Bulls-Hawks playing their playoff game, the playing game. And what's interesting, like, I, I had to, like, really look at it. Cause I didn't real like, I don't watch the NBA because I think it's, it's, it's dumb. This play-in tournament is stupid. But uh, what it is is the Sixers will play the Heat. Okay. And then the Bulls will play the Hawks. The loser of the Bulls-Hawks game is done. It's done. They're just done. They're just done. The loser of the Sixers Haw- Sixers Heat game will play the winner of the Bulls Hawks. Wait, wait, hold up. The loser of the Hawks game is done. Yeah, the Bulls uh, Bulls Bulls Hawks play in the first in in, in in theirs. So the winner, the loser of the Miami Heat Philly game, plays the winner of the game at Chicago Atlanta. So I'm just gonna okay. So set, say the 76, say the 76 ers win. Right. The Bulls will or the Heat will play the winner of the Bulls Hawks. That will make the eight teams after they get done with that game. Yes. Okay. So like say the 76 ers win, they clinch a spot. They clinch the seventh seed. Okay. Then the Heat would end up playing like the Heat would play the Bulls or the Hawks. And the winner of that game gets the playoff spot. Gets the eighth seed. And then gets swept out of the first round by the Boston Celtics. Yeah. 
You know, I mean. <laughs> there's no one's beat. I mean, I'm sorry. There's no. I I'm looking up and down like both sides of the East and West. If Boston doesn't win the whole damn thing, there's something seriously wrong. Right, hundred percent. Sixty-two wins. They they're sixty-two yeah. and twenty. They're, they're sixty-two and eighteen. The next best team in the league. The next best team in the East. This is how ridiculous this is. The next best team in the East has 49 wins. Yeah. And then we wonder why the East gets their ass beat by the West when it comes to the finals. Oh, the next the, the next best team in in the NBA completely is Denver with 56 wins. As opposed to 62. Like Boston if Boston has a very good team, and I I can see them winning the whole thing. I really do. Yeah, that team is not. Yeah, that team's sick. Team is very fun to watch. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday. Yeah, that team's a lot of fun. Um, and in other notes in the NBA, the two worst teams are in the surprise, surprise, the Eastern Conference. Um. Detroit right now has a two game lead on that last place team. <laughs> we are we we are in we are in firm control of that number one number one pick. But are pass. we but doesn't the lottery, doesn't the, the, lottery. the lottery I hate that. Yeah. Does that mean we get more envelopes in the lottery? Yeah, that means we get another couple balls in the lottery. Thanks. <laughs> Go oh, Detroit. Stupid. <laughs> uh but they're thirteen and sixty seven. Uh, Washington's 15 and 65. So I bet you Washington gets the first pick and we get kind of. Uh, so I'm just thinking about, you know. Actually, I, San Antonio. San Antonio will end up uh, getting the number one all, overall draft pick to go with Victor Wemanyama. What happened to basket NBA from when we were watching it as, as young kids and teenagers? What happened to it? Because... The last good season, to be completely honest, well, the last good quality season, like, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a because we're Pistons fans. Uh, I think it the last good couple seasons was when the Pistons were relevant because that was what oh oh six oh seven no. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I look at, I watch a game, and I'm not trying to be a dick, but I watch a game, and when there's empty seats in the lower bowl, you got a problem with the situation. Yeah. And it's like, I don't understand it because when, I mean, we were we were ticket season season ticket holders, and again, the Detroit Pistons were amazing at that point in time, but. There was hardly any empty seats in any game, but now we get empty seats in the lower bowl, and you're like, "Why? What's the difference?" So, it's, it it might be pricing too, might like, because I don't know if you've looked at po- potentially going to a game. No, <laughs> Can't they're lie. they're expensive, man. Like, hold on, let me look at the scores. Up, um, let's see, do we play at home? Do, does Detroit play at all at home in the next couple? No, they have two games left and they don't play at home. Uh, look, Dallas Mavericks. What's, how to get tickets for that? Um, as low as, as low as, and this is when the Pistons are coming to town. The tickets as low as $54. I'm not paying fifty four dollars to sit in the nosebleeds. You know what I mean? That's true. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I see what you're saying because you're talking seventy five dollars and still in three tons. Mm-hmm. Eighty eighty two dollars. Let me see. When my because we had 
I think the wasn't the palace that was two levels, right? Two, two levels. There was there was three levels. There was there a was mobile, three, so. then the middle, and then where where ours were was the yeah. But we we were getting like forty five dollars a seat, thirty five dollars a seat. Yeah, not not eighty. Uh well let's take a look. Let's do the wings. Uh frustrating. The wings play the Canadians on Monday night, um, at home. Tickets for that are as low as forty bucks. See, I wouldn't mind I I would pay the forty bucks. Right. Full time. Yeah. They have what, but, three games left? Um Yeah, they have Three against the Maple Leaves, Montreal, Montreal. They need to win all three. But we'll get that. We'll get to that near in a all second. Right. Well, so let's talk about the NHL. Um, the playoff picture: we got the Bruins, Panthers, Leafs, Rangers, Canes, Islanders, Lightning, and Penguins in the East, all locked in. Well, the Penguins aren't necessarily locked in. Uh, let's see the Penguins. Let's see the wild card. I'm looking wild card here. The Penguins are the number two wild card. Uh, and let's give me the Penguins. Come on. Um, they have three games. They got the Boston Bruins, the Predators, and the Islanders. Um, yeah. the Bruins could beat them. Predators are also a, a playoff team on, on in the West, and the Islanders are fighting to, with. Uh, no, no, the Islanders are the six are, are the sixth seed right now. Yeah. So the Pens could could take could lose three in a row, and the Wings could win three in a row and slide in. They nice. need to win. Yeah. They need- it's not not really necessarily can they it's a, it's a need to i mean they got they should be able to take the montreal those both those games i mean they're playing good hockey my only concern would be their that Toronto maple leafs game i mean they got to start hot you know so <clears throat> yeah i mean even if we take two two of the next three and the pen and pens get get swept we can get in. All right. and it's got to be a regulation win. They can't go into overtime. No. They have to win in regulation. They have to win in convincing fashion. Um, because Montreal is in last place, I think they have – they're 30 and 36. They're like the second worst record in the, in the NHL – third worst record in the NHL. So um, – so we're just on the outside looking in right now. So, um, but yeah, it's it's playoff hockey, man. It's this is where it starts. Like, if you, I don't, I would hate to be the team. Like, if Detroit does get in, I would hate to be the team that has to play them in the first round when they're when they're as hot as they are right, like winning three in a row like that. Right. Um, but. Early predictions, I think it might be it's going to be uh, Bruins or Leafs uh, in the in the finals against uh, the Stars. I'm going to say Dallas. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, I wouldn't. I'd agree with you on the Bruins and the Leafs, um, but you're not going to. Yeah, Bruins are leaves up there. I have to say that. And I'm gonna say watch out for the Winnipeg Jets. They're playing hot yeah. hockey. They're not bad. They're not a bad but they're gonna play, they're playing hot some hot 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 hockey, so we'll see. They're not bad. They're not a bad they're not a bad um not a bad team at all. Um so and the Blues are over in the West, 
St. Louis with three games back or three points out of the playoff spot. Um, they're chasing. They're chasing the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, and the Golden Knights, they have four games, three games left. They have the Wild. Av- or I'm sorry, they do have four games left. The Wild, Avalanche, Blackhawks, and the Ducks. So they could potentially drop two. Um, and the St. Louis Blues. They only have three games left, so they better hope that they win all three and and uh, Golden Knights drop at least two of those. But they got the Hurricanes, the Kraken, and the Stars. They play the best team in the in the league the last game of the year, so they might get lucky and get the win because they're resting their players. Right. So. There's there's a lot of like we said that so there's a lot going on in hockey. There's a lot of ifs and what 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 happens if this does. So, um, that that's that. Um, we can turn our attention to uh, the Masters Golf Tournament that's going on right now. Did you want um, to touch on uh, what the big news in NFL is before we go to the Masters? Oh yes yes yes. Uh, the NFL. Uh, lost a family member of uh, yesterday, yesterday morning. Uh, uh, O.J. Simpson passed away. Um, former USC Trojan, former Heisman Trophy winner, um, Buffalo Bill, thousand yard rusher in, at, in Buffalo, um, an all time great football player, um, an actor. He was in the Naked Gun movies um, with Leslie Nielsen. Um, well, yeah, he passed away yesterday. You know, say what you want to say about O.J. Simpson and the legal trouble he got into and got himself out of. Say what you want to say about that. But O.J. Simpson as a football player, watching him as a kid, he was dirty, dude. He was like a Barry Sanders, you know. They, they both they're solid running backs and stuff that you don't you don't see here any late, you know and you got to give props to the man as a football player. And uh, he was good. I Honestly, I can say I didn't know he had cancer, really, to be honest with you. No. Uh, I knew so, he was going through some tough times. He had to sell his Heisman Trophy and that for right. a little legal fees and all that. But, yeah. Mad respect to O.J. Simpson. Um, so, mm. over, over at the Masters, we have a live look-in. We have... Um, do Tiger Woods? Uh, we always have to acknowledge him. He is the original. He's the golf tribal chief, I guess. The guy who ran the table. He was the guy who led every tournament. It felt like for the longest time. And due to the injuries and and whatnot, he just hasn't been the same in multiple in a long time. Um, he's sitting at plus one. Um, He's sitting at plus one. He is, um, he's even through eleven holes today. So he's sitting at one. Uh, tied the, for thirty-four. I think I said tied hmm? for thirty-four. Tied for thirty-four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the cut, the cut line is the projected cut is plus four. So he could play the weekend. I hope he does. Um, be good for the game of golf. Good for, you know, to see Tiger compete all four rounds. I think that'd be a lot. Of, that'd be really cool. Um, some names that are not that are projected to miss the cut are uh, former Masters winner Charles Schwartzel, um, Keegan Bradley. Uh, Mike Weir, Justin Rose, Jordan Speed, mo- multiple time master champion sitting at seven over. Um, Bubba Watson, former master winner. Um, Dustin Johnston, Freddie Couples, they are all projected to miss the cut. Um, that, that, uh, 
Um, those are just names that like you expect to be in the mix every year, and they it it shows it shows you how crazy these games are, these uh, these tournaments are that. Nothing's guaranteed. You you can't just show up and, and, and hit the ball and expect to win the tournaments. It's um So last year's winner John Rom John Rom is sitting at plus one as well. So he him and Tiger might end up being uh get, paired together going, tomorrow. Paired together, yeah. Um, but the top the top ten right now is Hogland or Hoggard. Um on. Homa, Max Homa, the kid from the US. Pretty solid player. Uh Bryson D. Shambeau. One and then one of the hottest hottest players on tour right now is Scotty Scheffler. He's positioned himself uh, at six under as well. Uh, Dean Willett, Davis, Connors, Fox, Niedemann, uh, Sheck, Young, Morikawa, and Moore. All, all uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, Roy McIlroy also at one under. Um, Victor Hovland at one under. So there's a lot of really good players bunched in at that one under slot uh, trying to catch uh, Homa, DeChambeau, and Haggard. Uh, so hopefully, you know, anyone but Bryson DeChambeau. I'm just not a fan of Bryson DeChambeau. Mm-hmm. Good weekend of golf. And he just took the lead. Yep. Bryson DeChambeau just took the lead. Oh, I'm oh, I'm sorry. It's not DeChambeau that that's kind of an a hole. It's um Brooks Kepka. Can't stand that guy. You know, Brooksy. I'm not even seeing him on here. Nope. But anyway, so it was a good time here. Uh, we're talking. Uh, Talking everything sports for the week and uh, uh, quick plug: we have all the shows that Scott's involved with. Uh, Want to run them down right quick for everybody? Today, just in like thirty minutes, I will have Ashley Hartley from WXW on today. Then I'll be showing the WXW final show um, tomorrow evening. Um, Tune in for it. Bobby Fish. Off will be on air. Uh, um, Chico Adams. Um, Sean Scott. A bunch of guys that are up and running that have you seen him on WWE. Sean Scott. Look for him. He was the one of the bunnies in WrestleMania that came down the with um Bad Bunny. Um, uh, just the name. So you know. So, and then next week is W is XIW week. I'll be having. Five to, I think all of their most of their roster on the um on the podcast in the evening times to lead into the April twentieth um big show where I'll be doing it live. So that's my week. Yeah, we'll be uh I'll I'll be back on your on your screen um for the Tuesday show and uh we'll be talk not sure actually what we're gonna be talking about. Oh. I'm gonna hop, maybe I'll hop on and be like be like, be like our new world champion, Cody Rhodes, and be like, so, what do you want to talk about? We need to do one of those. Talk. We need to do one of those. If we need a bunch of people to get on this, get in our chat. We need to do a question, a Q&A somehow. We need to promote that and do a Q&A. That'd be fun. I will say this show, once we're, once we're past, once we're in nothing but Major League Baseball, I'm going to start a new segment, a new part of the show. It'll be basically the MLB stuff first, and then we, we're going to go into, I feel, pretty fun 
thing to do would be a career retrospective. So, of a professional athlete. So, if you're watching this, if you're watching this and uh, um, want to throw a professional athlete, not a wrestler, and a professional athlete um, uh, in hockey, baseball, basketball, football, if you want us to do something along those lines and let us know what, what, what athlete you want to do, want me to do, Scott and I to talk about and feel, and if you want to, you could potentially be a guest and help and, and talk with us about those things. So, uh, reach out to me. Uh, if you're watching this, you probably have all my socials and, and that kind of stuff. So don't be, don't be scared. Just send me a message. Be like, Hey, I want to come on and I want to talk about Michael Jordan. Or I want to come on and talk about Barry Sanders. Or I want to come on there and talk about Wayne Gretzky or someone along those lines. Just don't be afraid to just throw throw a suggestion out there of who you want to talk about or who you want to see us talk about. Uh, but it would be a career retros- retrospective on whatever player you want to talk about. So. It's something I'm looking at doing for uh, the Friday shows once we're basically in just baseball season. So, all right, guys. um, Again, thank you for coming on uh, and joining us uh, or rewatching this at a later date. Um, I enjoy talking sports. I think I, you know, and I hope you guys enjoy listening to me and my ex, my mansplaining of things, of uh, of overanalyzing things that really I shouldn't even have to analyze. Um. Anyway, thank you guys, uh, and we will uh, see you guys uh, next time. Uh, until then.